electric vehicles have sort of satiated the the early adopters, the folks who want the latest and the greatest and cost is no object. And now we're moving into kind of that mainstream market and they're getting a look at the average price of an electric vehicle being around 60 grand and the fact that there really is not a very robust infrastructure of chargers around the country like there is gas stations. And they're thinking it's not time yet, but I'd like to do something to reduce my carbon footprint. How about a hybrid? So hybrids, sales are going to be up 35% this year in the United States, and several automakers are really going after hybrids now. And what kind of price point, Keith, are we talking about on these hybrids? You just mentioned the fully electric can be up in that $60,000 range. Doesn't sound like a car for the everyman. So how much can you expect to spend on a hybrid these days? Well, you know, Ford sells a hybrid tiny pickup truck called the Maverick for under $30,000. And... Um, and you know you can hybrids can be had for kind of regular car prices anymore. Ford is right now doubling production of its hybrid F-150 and lowering the price by $1,900 so that it's equal to the you know equivalent gas engine version of the truck. And it has actually you know plug ports in the back of the truck. It's like a mobile generator. Uh, so it it does more than just kind of save you you know, money at the pump. It also provides you with electric power that you can use to power a work site or a campsite or a tailgate. And you were just mentioning the infrastructure for these charging ports and obviously not nearly as developed as gas stations around the country, but where are we at with uh, developing more of these charging stations? And especially, you know, around the Northeast here, it's probably not nearly as ubiquitous as it would be out in California. Yeah, California is the leading market. That's where they're Tesla really dominates. Um, but yeah, I'm here in the Midwest in Detroit. If you think it's bad in the Northeast, it's really bad here. <laughs> you just don't have a, you know, a charging uh, station on, on every corner. And the industry hasn't even be able, been able to settle on, you know, sort of what the, the plug should look like. There's still an argument over, you know, whose chargers to use. Everybody is kind of migrating to the Tesla style charger and using the Tesla superchargers, which are faster and better. But, you know, there's still two different kinds of chargers out there. And, you know, JD Power has, you know, done a number of surveys that shows, you know, the infrastructure isn't very strong or robust. People get to them and they're broken oftentimes. It's just not very reliable. Can you even have one of these in your garage? Sure you can. And, okay. and that's what a lot of people do is you have the home charger and you charge it like you charge your cell phone at night while you're sleeping. Um, but uh, but still, if you wanna you know, go on vacation and you're driving beyond your battery's limitations, which is pretty easy if you're heading up to Maine there from Manhattan, right? Um, yeah. You're gonna need a charger along the way and you might have a hard time finding it. Which is why hybrids are interesting. Keith, talk a little bit more too about the rate environment, the cost for auto loans, and that as a result of these being lower cost points, that your loan is gonna be also less and how that yeah. is is a catalyst and also just there's lots of options right for hybrids i had no idea yeah there are options and yeah the, the whole rising interest rate issue is adding to you know the affordability crisis that's really hit the auto industry for starters you might recall that just the average price of a car is up 30 percent since 2019 just a regular car is is forty five thousand dollars on average it used to be in the low 30s um and and so now you have auto loans that are 7.2% on average. The average monthly payment on a car is 750 bucks, which used to be in a, you know, a rent payment. So, um, so that's created even more of an affordability crunch, makes buying an expensive EV even harder. So again, you come to the hybrid, it's, it's kind of a, not even a midpoint, it's closer to the cost of a regular gas car than it is the cost of an EV. And people see that as an affordable alternative and a way to sort of edge into electrification. Got to say EV is the high cost of EVs. And I know you say 60000 but, you know, you start looking into anything with a luxury bent to it, and it's so much more than that. Keith, having said that, oh, so, sure. so what does this mean then when we think about this move towards EVs? We talk about tipping points globally and how it seems like we're getting closer or we're kind of there when it comes to EV adoption. Um, because of the price issues, because of higher auto loans, Loan rates. What are you guys thinking about as you cover this sector about the role of hybrids 
going fo- forward and maybe sticking around a little bit longer? Right. So hybrids at the moment are still expected to outsell EVs this year, just slightly. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll have about 9% of the market versus 8% of the market for EVs. And I just want to underscore that. So that what that means is fewer than one out of 10 vehicles sold in America is an EV. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we talk about EVs so much that we think they've already taken over the market. Nine out of 10 vehicles sold in America are a traditional gasoline fueled car, not even hybrid. So that's something to keep in mind as you think about how EVs are taking over. But EVs are expected through the decade to increase a lot and they will outsell hybrids. They won't outsell internal combustion vehicle, uh, internal combustion engine vehicles likely before the end of the decade. But you know, President Biden wants half Mm -hmm. of EV sales by 2030 to be electric. That is a stretch goal. And just one last one here for you, Keith. When we're looking at some of these sales forecasts, I mean, this this, this uh, firm that you cite in your story, Global Data, expecting Toyota's hybrid sales to rise 7.5% this year. You're talking about this affordability issue, especially with these high rates. How much of that do you think is attainable? Yeah, I think it is, uh, you know, with the hybrid piece. Uh, we just had auto sales come out this week, and Toyota and Honda and Ford today are all reporting double-digit gains in hybrid sales. I really do think people that were headed down the EV highway have taken a turn and they're going hybrid. 